Hello, I am here for the 100th episode of the Your Art Matters podcast. I cannot believe it's been 100 episodes now. I just want to first of all say a massive thank you to everybody who tunes in, downloads, supports us and has done over the years. I just looked at the stats as of this morning recording this and we've had um, 66,402 downloads of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm it's here incredible. with my amazing, <laughs> with my friend Sharon. Um, you all know now she's she's real because I talk about Sharon a lot. You know, you're my you're my my muse and my inspiration well, it's and mutual. And and there's no other person in the whole world that I would love to share this episode more than you. So thank you so much because it's you know in a big massive way, uh, Sharon is you know one of the reasons why I'm here doing this 100th episode 100% because Sharon helped me get this off the ground inspires me gives me the courage to speak Mm. and thank you Mm. thank you for being here for this special episode Mm. so I thought I'd invite Sharon in lots of people have been asking saying when's there going to be a Michelle and Sharon show oh do you remember those times we used to do all the time like when our babies were little we did on a Thursday night and we're like is it free are they gone to bed yeah yes come in and yeah, yeah come with us. and we have a little gin and tonic. We did. We used <laughs> we to. Used to this was hours. years ago. This was like six years ago. Sharon and I used to just sit in Sharon's kitchen, mm. going live, talking, talking, just talking. That was before <laughs> Facebook Live as well, wasn't it? it? Was before, before Facebook Live, we we used to go live on something called Periscope back in mm. the day. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And so I thought it'd be really lovely to bring Sharon in. Sharon is a full time artist and sculptor specializing in clay and I thought it'd be really lovely to bring Sharon in and hear Sharon's perspective on being an artist right now and what Sharon's been drawn to and learning. We brought Sharon in a year ago actually to talk about an exhibition at the Collect um, show which was a year ago we were just reminiscing. So we're going to talk to Sharon about you know what Sharon's learned since that time. So should we dig back to Thank that you. point? Yeah. The, the collect show was a big, yeah. big moment for you, wasn't it? Because it was almost like you were going to that next level. Yeah. Yeah, it you was. Know, it was a big deal. Personally, but yeah. also physically. So let's talk about collect. Collect is, um, for those of you who don't know, collect is a, is, um, a really big event for all of the designer makers so if you're a maker so if you're using anything that's a tangible object um, such as clay wood metals plastic sculptural based but in terms of um, a high-end craft product not necessarily product but just a high-end craft art um, that's what collect is and it's based um, it's formed by the crafts council in the uk and it's their biggest event, and it's a really leading international event. And um, yeah, I was selected with my arty buddy Wayne Chisnell, um, because we did a we did a project called Unlockdown, and it was based on being in unlock in lockdown in the UK um, throughout 2020, right through to 2022. And then we um, took our work to collect and, and showed it, showcased it there. It was really, really, really exciting. It's very exciting, a very poignant part, a very pivotal part of my artistic practice because it was a reach at a different audience. It was um, showcasing something I hadn't done before. I'd not collaborated on a project before. It was very new and I learned a lot about the project myself mm. and about the work that I really wanted to move forward with. Yeah. So it was it was really quite a pivotal moment. Um, the Unlockdown project was about using a tangible um, material. So in my case, it was clay um, with, um, so giving, um, making a piece of sculpture and then giving that clay, which is really, really personal to me. I love clay. I love clay. <laughs> uh, clay is my world. You know, it's my friend. It's my go-to thing. It's my mm. mirror. It's, you know, it's, mm. it's my material that I love. Mm. Um, and, um, and then to give that really precious thing to somebody that I didn't really know very well at the time, um, to Wayne in his studio to do whatever he wanted with. So then he chopped it up and he put it back together and then he gave it to me. So we had a, basically a conversation through materials, through tangible materials. Um, 
and talking about freedom, constraint, um, movement, and then how do we grow, you know, from our own constraint, our own physical constraint. Um, because at the time, you know, during lockdown, you couldn't have a touch. You couldn't, you know, see your friends, your mm. lovely friends. Yeah. You couldn't, yeah. you know, not even your friends. There was no sports, you know. Mm. It's such, I and mean, everyone had a different experience of being in lockdown. Some people loved it. Um, and some elements of it, I really did. Mm. Um, but just witnessing what was happening in the world and how it's relatable um, to us all. So using my art then, that was that the catalyst to now use my art as a platform to talk about things that we feel uncomfortable to talk about sometimes, you know, such as loss and um, such as, you know, experiences of something. And some, sometimes a bit macabre and quite deep, go deep really quick. But also yeah. something that's joyous and something that's fun, mm. you know. And how can we learn from these experiences that we are that we all have and we all share because we've all got a life, mm. so, you know. We all have different experiences of being in this one body that is human, mm. that is experience. So yeah, that was that was quite a that was quite a thing, and that was last year. <laughs> a year ago, it, it feels so, like ages. So <laughs> I know. So, <clears throat> what do you feel that that show? taught you in that moment but then also a year on I'd love to know because you know in that moment I think as an outsider looking in sometimes you put so much emphasis not you but people in general on that particular moment yeah and the outcome of that particular moment and we often overlook the longevity of that moment and what it's going to bring in the long run because now you've got this collaborative project that you're working on yeah and so sometimes we can get disheartened and I'm not saying that you were but there um, were times it was very challenging because it was tough yeah yeah it's very challenging you were putting a lot on the line yeah there was an investment wasn't there for that event there was a monetary investment there was um, a personal investment there was there was time there was energy there was everything put my work on hold for it yeah um but I yeah I think you know Go, that's a really that's a really bloody brilliant point because Michelle, you are obviously the guru that is Michelle <laughs> that brings all of this. Obviously, like, obviously. <laughs> you are. You're my muse too. You know, it's a two way yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. We learn from each other, don't we? Mm, we so do. you pick out the we bits do. that you know that yeah. people don't. Yeah. Um. So initially, when I applied for the Collect Open, which is this, you know, this big thing, it was a big, huge thing. Oh my god, I'm going to collect. Oh my god. Ah! And when was like, yeah, it's not all that, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Because <sighs> he'd done it before, so he's at, yeah. he's on a different part of his journey yeah. Yeah. than I was at the time. Um, yeah. And and having that experience of then, you know, pulling out all the stops, I mean, making these blooming plinths, you know, deciding what plinths were made mm. were being made. We made our plinths, these yeah. white boxes that for our work to go on. They had to be specific. They had to be white, they had to be really pristine. And we got um, my, my friend to make them. He's a woodworker, you know, he's, he's, he's timber. Um, those plinths were made, but the, the wood was wrong. So we like work into a deadline. All those little tiny bits that you work towards a show, the unseen. That, so when you, when you go to an exhibition, you don't see all of the work that goes in behind it. It's such hard work. It was such hard work. You know, getting your vans together, you know, getting your get you know where do you stay who you know all of those like nerves that just you know goes with it yeah as well your yeah. emotional kind of content that goes in mm. that that show it's not there and then you've yeah. got to stay there and the, i think the opening um of collect is starts at 9 30 on the thursday or the wednesday i can't remember um and and it finishes at 9 30 at night and you don't want to not be there next to your work because you've invested so much time in that work you don't want to not be there so you're there for 12 hours constantly talking mm. even I ran out of words <laughs> <laughs> which is like that's quite unheard of <laughs> it's yeah, strange that was on kind your... of a... yeah yeah so that kind of um that initial oh I'm in collect oh my god it's amazing to now knowing what um, who the organisers are and they're people just like me mm-hmm. they're doing a job just like I am yeah. and they're real people and they are not unreachable mm. um, so I learned a lot in my con- I, gave, I think I gained confidence it mm. gave me a lot of confidence in believing what I had to say was important enough for people to want to hear it which is a huge 
good deal for me. Yeah. yeah. So now I can go into a room, you know, with other artists, whether they are really well known or not. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, I now have the confidence and the belief that what I'm doing is true to myself and it's what I want to do. And it's that kind of gut, you know, feeling that is, you know, if you, you can't, you can't see it, but you know the feeling of I'm on the right path. This mm. is like gets, gets, you know, gets you in your gut. Mm. Um, mm. So I know that now I've got the confidence to listen to that. Yeah. Um, and then to say no. I've learned to say no to a lot of things. So I've, I've had to very sadly um, say no to a lot of galleries that I was in, that I were in, mm -hmm. that um, that isn't going to help me on my my long game, my journey. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not necessarily I want to be in the Tate Modern. It's not that. It's that I want to make the best work that I possibly can, you know, regardless of where it goes. It doesn't matter where it goes as long as I'm making the work and I'm reaching out to people that are important to me. Mm -hmm. you know and sharing that story and using my art as a narrative or a platform to talk about those things that are really important to me mm -hmm. whether it's like going to a you know going to a lecture I've just been to Bath Spa University and um, worked with the wonderful department the ceramics department there and the students there currently who have experienced Covid you know and haven't had the they haven't had the you know the ex same experience that I would have given or shared if I was still teaching and in further education mm. in the UK obviously mm. it's different to everybody globally but um, they haven't had the life drawing experience mm. they haven't had the tangible experience they haven't had this like this touch thing that that anchors me in and makes me feel really alive and you know it, that it's like my mirror my go-to place mm. they don't have that experience or that bodily knowledge that we have mm. you know that I've grown up with yeah we were talking about this just before we came on, actually, about how, you know, the COVID time for students has yeah. had a big impact. Um, and a lot of things became digital, even more digital mm -hmm. than before. And it was crazy before, wasn't it? And um, we were talking about how my son had come off, you know, his a lot of his schoolwork is on his tablet, is on his device. And it was, it's almost like in that moment when he's on that, he forgets what, he enjoys and when I took it away from him he he just said I just don't know what to do now <laughs> I said mm -hmm. you go in the garden and go and play because he loves digging and he loves doing all you know just love he can spend hours in the garden by himself but it's really interesting to watch him in that moment go off that device and then just forget that he loves going out in the garden yeah He's, he was so disconnected from himself yeah now I know he's only eight but this happens to all of us and it's yeah really important, isn't it, that we we keep reconnecting yeah. through I I believe through art materials especially yeah. to connect to ourselves. It yeah. is like you said that mirror. Yeah, and that's so important. I relate it to like yeah. you know the um, oh there's lots of I was just about to go on off on a tangent, but I'm not going to do that. Um, let's bring it back to the <laughs> the tangible experience. Mm. You know we see kids you know, and parents and caregivers give their children a screen, you know, or, or a movie or a, something to just watch because they need, the parents need or the caregivers need to be still. Yeah. And they need some time and a breathing space. Yeah. And it's an easy thing to do to put um, the children on, you know, watch something to distract them from, you know, to make them behave or, you know, conf um, not constrict or control, but that's kind of strong words. What I mean is it's like fit, fit yeah. into the behavioural system that we need them to be in in certain times. Yeah. And maybe, maybe I'm, I'm very aware of my own experience of being in the, you know, in the, in the 70s of being a child, the 70s and 80s when there wasn't that opportunity um, to, to watch the telly all day long. You know, there's like one, one programme in the morning and one one in the, in the you know in, you know if you're lucky you know you catch Which it I used to run home from yeah. school to watch because <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to miss it it's, yeah you know my own experience is very very different to um the experience of my own children mm. and and I and I wonder I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad or a good thing I just it's for me it's about being curious about how it's affecting 
our behavior and how is it affecting our um, our play you know mm-hmm. our our joy and our freedom to play and express you know the body wants to dance and it wants to wants to be active and it also wants to be calm it needs all of that doesn't it mm-hmm. doesn't need to just mm-hmm. be one thing mm-hmm. um and yeah. that that being that reconnecting of being outdoors you know and playing in the mud my first experiences of you know finding freedom was being outdoors playing in mud obviously mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it's a no brainer for me you know I make things out of mud now um but i think you know on a screen it's very fast paced and it's exciting and it's like this game and this games are so interesting and they're there to stimulate the brain in a different way mm. so maybe a good balance between the two would be good you know yeah. it's and just so hard isn't it because it even <laughs> just to remind us to stop a minute yeah turn it off go outside yeah. <laughs> because just going back to that point um with isaac and just seeing how disconnected he was and, and that was just from we have to use these devices because of school works it's not even like mm. some some situations we're not <clears throat> always using it and I, I do use it sometimes just because I need some peace and quiet I'm gonna hold my hands up yeah, me too. <laughs> just like there you go watch something <laughs> um but you know a lot of the time as well the school work is on the devices and you, mm. so you ha- they have to use them and also you don't want them to be behind and we're in the digital world they've got to learn it so you can't take them away from it completely, can you? Yeah. Uh, but it was just really interesting to see how how detached you can become in that instant of of being on that device. Like you say, it stimulates yeah. the brain yeah. in such a way that when you come off it, it is sometimes hard to just yeah. know what to go and do and you forget what you like and what you enjoy. <laughs> yeah. And because we are absorbed in this world, you know, this digital world as well, um when before we came on I was talking to Sharon about a sculpture that I made years ago oh and let's show it yeah some people listening you won't be able to to see it I'll put, I'll, oh, I'll put some I'll it. put a picture in the show notes <coughs> but um this sculpture I, I it was in the shed so I'll put a picture in the show notes if you're watching I'm, I'm just showing a sculpture a sculpture which looks like it's like a sea monster I call it <laughs> it's basically uh, I found this as I'm tidying the house at the minute and moving house. And oh gosh, as soon as I picked this up, I was telling Sharon that I felt part of myself in this. Like I just, I was just taken back to the moment when I made this, and I, I really was connected to this in in a really, really, really deep way. But I was saying to Sharon how how crazy it is that since I made this and I went off to art school and then in art school focused on painting. Um, as I progressed through the through the degree um, and, and lost touch with three-dimensional work and then just continued with painting and continued because that's always what I'd done and what I know and so it is this like disconnect I just forgotten how much I loved making this and I just think why did I not <laughs> carry on or do it again and this was 15 years ago so it's really time. great. It's a really great sculpture. It reminds me of like some sort of. I want to. I want to speak into it. Oh, it's like this kind of sea urchin, but it's also like a spine as well. It reminds me of a spine yeah. or a body part or an internal yeah. organs or some sort of thing that you can, you know, your blood mm. flows through, and it's really tactile. I really mm. wanted to touch it when I mm. when I saw it. It's like yeah. all of these like you know, metaphorical vein, yeah. you know, things coming out of it. and Orifices everywhere. Orifices. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's absolutely if fantastic. If you're listening and you can't see it, you're going to really be like, waiting. what are they looking at? <laughs> but, you know, I think the point in this is sometimes, sometimes the most obvious things are staring us in the face and we can't see them because we've got so... Di- I think it's about disconnect for me sometimes. It's just that life has taken over and I've just got so disconnected from this part of myself Mm -hmm. and it got lost Mm -hmm. but how lovely to just re you know refind it again but I think there's these moments you know you were talking about the tangible Tangible, and really just getting connected with the basics of I loved just shaping this and and as soon as I got this out the shed I just I picked it up and I was like, 
<laughs> sounds really weird. It was like we were one. And I was like, oh my gosh, why have I just chucked you in the shed? <laughs> That's no longer part of me. Get yeah, rid of that. In with yeah. the new. Is new always better? You know, yeah. it's just because it's new, is it better? Yeah. Is it a different, you know, this... The, when we when we use let's talk about materials and a tangible material. For me, a tangible material grounds me. It makes it, it you know anchor. It's my head is always spinning. It makes this like ooh sound. If you open up the head, it's like ah. That's how it feels to be in my head sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it, and I fast forward, you know, when my words tumble and I can't get them out because my head is so fast and it, and you know it's in a hurry and a rush all the time. Go 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 go. Like this fast train. You know, always on, go, 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 go. To stop that train, I need to anchor myself and ground mm. myself with things like music, um, by walking up the woods for me. Um, and it's not like that for everybody. I know some yeah. people who absolutely yeah. hate going outside yeah. and it's yeah. their worst thing ever. Yeah. It's not for them. It's okay. It's just a sort of like, you know, experiences yeah being curious yeah. about why those experiences make us who we are mm. and you know the the work that I did 10 years ago does not have any relevance to my life now mm. and my work now might or might not have any relevance to anything that I make in the future mm. but what I do know now is that if I know that my my head is spinning and it's emotionally charged I can fit that emotional connection changes the molecular structure of my body and it makes me feel awful or sad or joyous or whatever and it changes the feeling in my body and I need to express it somehow yeah and I express mine through something that I can touch because it grounds me mm. and it makes me feel calm mm. and sometimes you know when I'm making a sculpture in the pottery in my workshop I am bawling my eyes out I'm like oh my god oh, I didn't know that you were here <laughs> oh, like seriously sobbing like in that emotion if John if John um, is listening to the podcast he shares a studio with me now John Smockham. Um if he's if he's there it's fine because you know John and I you know we're, like we love a good cry yeah sometimes yeah but also it's the the euphoricness as well sometimes when I'm making a sculpture there's this like this thing that comes alive and I'm like ah mm. this is amazing how do I not do this all the time? And there's yeah. all those boring parts in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the hard bits. And we the can't hard get bits going. And the, and, yeah, it's you know, yeah. it's this ebb and flow. It is this, and sometimes flow. it works and sometimes yeah. it really doesn't. Yeah, but it yeah. all comes back to the tangible and you know why, why we why we need that still and is it being forgotten about? You know, when we are sharing it in our educational systems, in our you know in our in our skills set when we're growing up as children and babies Mm. you know where is that where is that play Mm. how is it affecting the mind and how is it affecting the brain Mm. and how is it affecting our connectivity with each other and the place that we live Mm. that's quite interesting to me and ourselves and ourselves because of course uh, yeah I, i think that's one of the big ones for me is um especially noticing the sculpture and thinking how could I go 15 years without realizing that I loved something so much how how have I lost that have you forgotten I'd forgotten yeah. that part and I think so if I've forgotten that part of me someone listening here today has forgotten a part of them I can guarantee probably all of us are sitting mm-hmm. here with a forgotten part that lights us up that makes us feel so connected and we've lost it and you know is it is it um is that a bad thing? No, but or is it just is it of noticing? It's about noticing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's quite exciting because you realise that there are parts of you that light you up. But I, I think that and then discovering it is like, oh my gosh. And it's really, like a reconnection. Yeah. For some people it can feel sad though. You think, how did I let this go? And why have I only seen this now? But I think I think it's more prevalent now because of the digital world. And I do think that more of us are feeling disconnected from Mm. ourselves because we're in this space of information overload. Mm. There isn't enough space to see the simplistic things in our lives that just make us feel connected and and relax us. It's so easy, isn't it? I'm a a gamer. It kind of uh, just triggered... Um, I like to play games sometimes on my phone. 
Yeah. So I just game. Do, 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 just to stop me. Just to kind of stop. Yeah, yeah. Slow but your brain down. When I was younger, I used to read books to stop mm. me. Mm. Mm. And now I'm now maybe I'm just a bit lazy. And yeah. It's easier. Yeah. It's easier to game than it is to read a book. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. It's interesting. It is. It is. And there's nothing wrong with just pausing for a moment and seeing it's just noticing. I think for me I'm just taking time to notice and 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 understand that yeah, I really enjoy that or I don't enjoy this and letting some things go. Yeah. Having some boundaries. Yeah. 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 It's a good and thing. And reconnecting again. So going back to the connect show. That was um, a digression. I want to bring it back yeah, to that. The collect, the lessons. collect open. In, because, yeah, one of, the, one of the things that I think has been really important from that is the people that you met yeah, from that event. Absolutely. Um, there's, there's, I've, we've kept together. Um, so the collect open show was actually um, cancelled because of COVID. We were supposed to put on our exhibition in 2021, but yeah. actually got postponed to 2022 and we were going to have an online version only which would not have worked for me because it's all about the um the touch you know and this this project that Wayne and I produced you know this body of work that we produced was all about having a conversation through um materials that were touched by um human hands um and and it's a conversation without words. That was what it was all about. Mm-hmm. So to have that on a screen would not have worked for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but the things that did work for us was um, we were um, not necessarily Wayne as much. I can't really speak for him because um, he's not here. But um, there were 12 artists in that group in the Collect Open part. So we were self-representing. We're not with a gallery at all. It's um, like showcasing some work that we'd not done before. Um, and I've, I've still kept, we've still kept in touch with each other online. So we're now um, getting together a, a project um, or a body of work um, that we have been working on for the past year. And it's called The Tangible Project. And that's going to be based at Somerset, not at Somerset House. Um, it's going to be based at the Oxo Tower nice. in May Um as part of London Design Week, so um, we've been sharing sketchbooks, we've been drawing, and we've been looking at land. With um, Lorraine Rutt, um, who is one of the artists, who is um, going to be taking part in the show. Um, she's going to collaborate with me, so I'm making the sculpture, and she's going to put. She's a cartographer, so she's a map maker, uh, but she also works in ceramics, and um, she's going to be designing some. Um, where she's going to be putting some maps of the Thames parts of the Thames on top of one of um, or into the surface of one of my sculptures so we're collaborating that way Mm -hmm. and talking about the importance of material things and the and the way that makers and artists use their hands Mm -hmm. and um, use um, specific materials such as wood um, textiles there's there's a lot of textiles Jacqueline um, Wilson she's not Wilson Jacqueline Got a second name, ah. um, Jacqueline, um, who is um, a blind woman, and she uses textiles um, and weaving. She's a weaver. She's amazing. Her work mm. is brilliant. Wow. Got Lisa Pettibone. Got Le- um, Lina Nisa- Lena Nilsson, who have um, yeah lots of really great friends now that we're mm. putting the body of work together. So that just shows the power sometimes mm. of events like that where sometimes people put so much emphasis on <clears throat> financial outcome and what to do what do I make from this and there is so much um I, I've noticed this throughout your career actually around connecting with people and events and early events where things didn't work out but yeah. you always came away and said but I've met the most amazing people <laughs> and those people over the years now have you know helped you build momentum haven't they yeah. in what you're doing and I feel like each each you've you've had like different eras throughout your art career and uh-huh. and now like this feels like a new era and a new group of people and you know you can you're evolving aren't you you said recently it's time for you to say something new through your work yeah. and I think this is definitely you heading in that direction 
It really is. Yeah, yeah, it is. I definitely want my work to say something, reflect what's going on in our society around us. Yeah. Maybe making some connections with what's um, what's universal, yeah. not just about me, but yeah. maybe it's about um, everybody that's on this planet. I was just trying to find a link yeah. to the tangible project, yeah. but yeah. I haven't quite got that yet. Oh, we'll put it in the show notes if you, anybody wants to go take a look. You can go and look at the link for that thank you oh wonderful thank you so much thank you so it's much for such an amazing me. session <laughs> you lot are such an inspiration thank Thanks, you Michelle. for everyone tuning in this will be amazing sharon griffin we'll put links below um if you'd like to go and follow sharon and, and find out more about the project we'll put links to that as well and thank you it's really amazing to celebrate the 100th episode here's to the next 100 <laughs> take care everyone we'll see you soon Bye-bye. bye bye